Hi guys, Squid here, and welcome to another episode of Tony Phony Simulator, otherwise known as Big Ambitions. In the last one, we set up our HQ. Our HQ's just over the road here. This is our new HQ. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Loving it, loving it. Now, our HR manager and our purchasing manager should complete their training. We have a quick look. They're currently on training. Look, 96%, 90%. They should top out at 100% today, which means we need to do a few things. We're going to buy a warehouse, or rent a warehouse, I should say, and we're going to start setting up purchasing our own stuff. So we're going to start buying stuff, importing it, and storing it in a warehouse and getting it delivered to our shops. And that's going to give us a bigger margin. So I think we decided on one of these two. I think this this was a nice one down the road here, wasn't it? Uh, that one's a little bit small. We could go with that, but it's down a side street. I quite like this because it's on the main road. So we'll open that. Best part of five grand deposit. Bunch of electrical stuff. Yeah, not cheap. There you go. So that's given us a warehouse. We've now got to put some stalls, some shelving in it. We've got two slots. We need to go and buy another truck and then we'll need to get a driver in and then we need to start stocking it up. You know, you could start naming things um, depending on what you're putting in there. But right now we don't need to worry about naming it at all. We'll just do that and we'll give it a color, you know, something like that. Warehouse number one. Uh, let's give those guys a quick call now and see if we can actually hire for the warehouse number one delivery driver. So let's get uh, three CVs in in the next day. That hopefully should do it. We live just up the road from the truck dealer. They should be open. It's Monday. Now what we need, we could hire one of these or buy one of these, but they're too expensive. 98 grand, 60 slot. That will allow you to deliver into more places. Or we can hire one of these and we can deliver into enough places for now. And that will do us. Let's try get it into the warehouse, Tony, without trashing it. Do you think you can do that? No, I thought not. There you go. So this is it. So we can go into here. And if we put that van into that slot, you see, we can say park vehicle. That now shows has been assigned to slot one. So if we go to the business manager, we've now got the warehouse tab here and we can see we've got a UMC desert in slot one. Now, when we get a driver, we can drag the driver in here and then that logistics manager will manage the driver and uh, delivery places and the truck. Right now, we need to go and buy some more shelving. Oh, come on. <laughs> Has it? I'm parked legally and you can't get past me. That's extraordinary. Now, the big problem is that these big shelving things are not cheap. These are the ones we need. The pallet shelf. Four of them is 10 grand. But well, that should give us some reasonable amount of stock storage. That will get us going. We can get more later. Now, we can just drive it at the moment because there's a spare slot available. Once there's two vehicles assigned into here, it won't let us drive in with another one, which can be slightly frustrating. Okay, we'll put one here. Another one there. These big ones, these two slotters, do have a forklift that you can use. So you can load and unload yourself using this thing. Completely silent forklift truck. Um, but we're not going to bother. So it doesn't really matter how we lay those out. It only matters if you're going to be loading and unloading yourself. Okay, right. So that's that set up. So let's go and have a little drive down the coast where the importers are. Uh, we should be able to look at them. They're all down here. I can't remember which one. I think it might be this one, Ocean Import. Browse what they sell. They sell cheap flowers, bottles of wine, cigars, expensive gifts, you name it. So this is the one that we want to go to. Oh, of course, as with all things, once we've spoken to them once, we'll be able to call them again. We've got their contact number. There's no such thing as the internet or the old yellow pages. You can't just look numbers up. Oh, no. You've got to visit them in person. And then you can phone them up. Right, hello sir, hello, I'm Tony Phony, how are you doing? I'd like to start a partnership with you, possibly maybe if your prices are good. Now, at the moment, I can't do it because our HR manager is still in training, so I have to decline that now because the weird thing is, is they won't sign a contract with us or with our company. They sign a contract with the purchasing manager. It's really weird. And that's why I've trained the purchasing manager up to the max because if you try to train them later, like manually, you have to take them off the job. But when you take them off the job, it also cancels your purchase contract. It's a real pain. So I just find it easier to max them out to 100% before we assign them in the first place. That makes sense. But now we've got them on the contact list, we can just phone them up anyway, so it's no biggie. Now I'm thinking, we're going to be going to have enough cash here. Probably not. We could probably do with a cash injection. Uh, can we give the bank a call? Van Tander. Let's give them a call, see if we can get a new loan. I'm thinking... 
we could probably do with another 30 grand just to get the stock. Hopefully they'll say yes. Yes, they can help us. You see, I like Bantandar. Bantandar is the bank that likes to say yes to Tony Foley. They believe in us. They believe in his vision. They believe in his jewelry empire. They believe in phony jewels. That's what they believe in. And you know what? They're going to get their money back. Tony will deliver. That's amazing. Tony just managed to damage the van whilst on the forecourt of the garage. That's a new first. Okay, we shouldn't have to wait long now. The employees should almost be trained. Let's just have a quick hour of gaming. There we go. And now they're ready. They are ready to deploy. So the first thing is we're going to sign them to Phony HQ. We've got a HR manager on 100%. They'll probably start coming up with some new demands soon enough. So we'll put the purchasing agent on the laptop. That gives them 40 hours a week. They're both in green. They're both happy. Now we've got a HR manager. They will now background train this lot. So everybody in here will now start to train them up, but not yet. There's one thing we have to do. We have to go back to our HQ, go to the HR manager. Look, zero out of 50 employees are assigned. So right now, she's not training anybody. Click on fill. That's going to assign all our current employees to this HR manager. This is the, is the level that this HR manager will train them to. We'll start off by training them up to like 75% and see how they go. Because the more you train them, the more demanding they start getting. They'll start to say things like, oh, I want this chair. Oh, I don't want to work weekends. Oh, I've decided I want a coffee machine in the office. Oh, I can't work in a dirty environment. All this kind of rubbish. The customer service will start to rise gradually over time. And then that means our customer service here will start to rise as our employees start to skill up. All right, so you see, we're starting to get messages now, and I will tell you what those messages are going to be. Demands, I guarantee it. So, Nettie says, uh, Hey, boss, I've been working here, and moving forward, I demand a peaceful working environment. That means Nettie wants our happiness to be above 80%. This person wants a clean working environment and a multi-purpose chair. Well, they've already got this. Now, the other thing the HR manager gives us, which is really handy, is, you know that scumbag, Ray, that we've not forgotten about, Ray Ryan? When he goes off sick, the HR manager will automatically bring in an agency staff member to cover that shift. However, like I say, we haven't forgotten about this person. He will pay the price ultimately. But not yet. That day's coming. Tony does not forget. Okay, so next thing is import-export contracts. So we'll say new partnership. Now, it will be with our purchasing manager. The better trained they are, the more negotiate price down. Burners should get us a good, decent price. We've now got a contract with them. So now we can decide what we want to buy and sell. And this is where it gets interesting. We can basically order a load of stuff into our warehouse. However, we have a minimum order value. We also have a price listed here, so we can start comparing some prices. This will make more sense if we go down to um, the current um, wholesaler, and we can basically work out some price differences. Let's focus on, say, cigars. I'm just going to bring up my calculator. So $3.94 each. If we go for a purchase agent contract, two nineteen each. That's down from three ninety four to two nineteen. That's almost half the price. So you can see now how our margins are going to get so much bigger. And that's just on cigars, like jewelry. Six cheap jewelry, six seven three one divided by fifty. That's one hundred and thirty four dollars, seventy four dollars. That's nearly half the price. That's seventy dollars per jewelry item they sell. So if we're making two thousand dollars now a day, we're probably going to make nearly four. Now we can do a one time order, or we can auto stock every one, three, or seven days. The problem is it will only auto stock if the warehouse stock demands it and we meet the minimum order value. So for now, we're just going to do a one-off purchase. We'll get some initial stock in. We know as select wines, we sell, what, nearly 3,000 cigars just here, and we sell 800 here. So that's probably about 4,000 cigars we need. Bottles of wine, we do 566, and we do 1,600. So that's at least 2,000 there. So 4,000 cigars, 2,000 at least bottles of wine, a bunch of paper bags, and then about 100 jewels. Right, so we want a minimum of 4,000 cigars. Look at the number straight away, like eight grand. This is why we needed cash, because if buying this stock means that you need to buy big just to make it even work. Cigars, cheap jewelry, where else can we go? Can't get paper bags annoyingly from this importer, which means we're going to have to drop that in the warehouse manually from the wholesaler. That should give us at least a week worth of stock. So we'll order that. That will come in overnight. Now we're just waiting for a driver. 
Let's go and pop into our office and have a quick look around. Look at them all beavering away. Hello, hello, how you doing? You're in green, I'm in red. You know why? Because I'm in charge. I am in charge here. Have a nice day. Okay, what what we got? What we got? We've got delivery driver 25%. You can definitely go. 41, that's a pretty good one, actually. Okay, so you're hired. Now we can go to the warehouse, drag that person in. We should have some inventory coming in. There you go. Look, in stock, 3,000, 4,100. We've got stuff in now. All we need to do is set up delivery. To set up delivery, we need a logistics manager. 25% full-time, 26% full-time. Okay, we've got two more CVs to come through. Let's wait it out and try and get a good one. Okay, last one, I think. 36% full-time. Okay, that was worth waiting. So, Jordan, you're hired. Manager schedule, drop you in. Now, you can see we've got one more slot left, so we've got one more possible office worker that we can work with, but now we can go to the Logistics Manager tab. This is where we can deliver. Uh, so you're going to be assigned to Warehouse 1. That gives them two destinations at the moment. As the Logistics Manager skills up, they'll be able to deliver to more places. We do only need two destinations at the moment, so we're fine. We've got Select Wines, and we've got... Um, booze and smokes right so now we can say what we want delivering so we basically want to go probably about 2000 3000 and 100 that's basically a week's worth of stuff so they'll deliver that as long as we've got the stock in they'll send it out every night they'll go out and do this and then we've got booze there you go. Now that will go out overnight. That will deplete the warehouse stock. Hopefully that will then trigger the purchasing agent to make some kind of order to replenish the stock that goes out. And the whole thing starts to flow. The last thing we need to do, and I usually forget to do this, but I've remembered this time, is cancel these deliveries. So let's see how it goes. Um, we shall sleep through the night and see if some stuff gets delivered at midnight. Watch our cash here. Oh, more demands. Lovely. Right, total profit is down a lot. Cash is now on 55. Well, let's have a look at our warehouse. 2,036, 2,500. So a whole bunch of stock flew out the door, but not a lot of it. Let's grab a snack and go and have a look around. Employees, right, clean working environment, piece of working environment. Don't care about those. They're all fine. Let's grab some shelving and just boost our uh, um, stock capabilities. Right, so only why don't you grab four of them? Of course, they all fit into the same size box. Why wouldn't they? Tony, what are you doing? You're a madman. Just block access to the toilets. <laughs> now, we can, in theory, stack them like that. It won't matter unless we want to get at stuff, but we won't ah. really want to get at stuff. It's always a taxi. Always a... They hate Tony. The taxi drivers literally hate Tony could also think about doing is paying back some of these smaller loans because we've got some surplus cash kicking around now we got the original 10 grand from jensen a 30 grand from jensen and everything else has been van tander um yeah i'm not too fussed about the interest like maybe just get rid of a 20 grand van tander for now now notice our cheap jewelry is, is only accounted for two percent of our sales it's not a lot so i think we need to start thinking about a dedicated jewelry shop However, our logistics guy can only deliver to two stores at the moment, so it is a bit of a problem. Right, let's quickly review finances. So, Booze and Smokes is only making 2,000. Select Wines is making seven. We've done more than that in the past, so I think sales are down. Customer counts are definitely down. Jewelry sales are good. We should start seeing healthier profit margins now coming through, so we just got to let our cash build up a little bit. Right, a few days later, the profit is now coming in quite nicely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hire a second driver for our warehouse because but I think we can open a dedicated jewellery store, phony jewellery, make it a real thing. <laughs> hey, nice pun. We'll make it a real thing and sell expensive and cheap tat. They're starting to get trained up nicely now, like slowly but surely getting better, thanks to that HR manager. Right, let's um, uh, let's see what's in demand. Let's see, cigars, cheap gifts. Okay, so that, I mean, this could be the reason why we've been getting fewer customers is because actually the demand for jewels has um, dropped. That's now down to 67%. So maybe we don't do this in Hell's Kitchen. Let's have a look at... Um, okay, so the garment district has no businesses and really wants expensive jewellery. However, cheap jewellery is very low. Oh, Murray Hill's looking like the one. Cheap and expensive jewellery in Murray Hill. So let's find ourselves. So we live here and uh, we've got a HQ there. So if we can get anything down here, 
So we've got three choices. We've got one down here on 6th Avenue, which is right on the coast. We've got one over here, and that one is a 7512. That's actually terrible. So I think this has probably got a heck of a deposit. 14,000 deposit. And don't forget, we also need money for jewellery as well. Cheap jewellery is not a problem. Expensive jewellery, it's a, it's a major investment. Uh, but I think we should go for it. So we'll start a new business. This will be a dedicated jewellery store. So cheap and expensive jewellery. We'll call it phony, phony gems, phony, phony crystal. How about that? Phony crystal. I like it. One jewellery showcase can do 15. So we're going to need like five of them. So five jewellery showcases and they cost 8,900 each. We're talking monster cash now. And uh, we also need the same thing on expensive jewels as well. So we might have to start small and build up, right? This is the problem when you're trying to scale up too quickly. We may have bitten off more than we can chew, but I think it'll be fun to try. If we want to open full time seven days a week, we're going to need a lot of CVs, I think. We're also going to need a cleaner. 27% part-time, so we could just hire them as a cleaner. Now, what we're going to need to do is jump in the van and uh, kit the place out. How many loans have we got? 60,000. We might be able to get some more capital out of Van Tandar. We can probably get another 30 grand out of Jensen. Let's give Jensen a call. Unfortunately, we're not able to combine a loan of more than 40,000 per client. Oh, we've already got two with you. Oh, it's Van Tandar that we can get more from. Durr. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I meant to call the other bank. <clears throat> let's let's go all in 50 grand loan we can definitely help you with that we know tony we believe in you my friend we know you can do this phony crystals is going to be huge right what do we need shopping basket storage shelves we'll get four of them three of them cleaning station we need that they can do 15 each so ultimate we need five and then therefore we need five cabinets to go with it cool that's those people and then the other one we'll call them and from here, we will need jewelry showcase. So I think we'll just go three for now. And we'll have to build this up when we're making the profit. Okay, what's that? It's 26 grand. Ouch. We'll need to get some expensive jewelry delivered. So 10 of them is six grand. <laughs> So we're going to need 40 then. We'll need some more cheap jewellery because we have to stock this place up with it. That's a 40 grand order right there. That takes care of that. So we've only got one little job left to do, and that's get a whole lot of paper bags and then get down there at 10 a.m. tomorrow and start kitting that place out. Now, the reason I have to do this is because our current importer does not import paper bags. It's ridiculous. But as it stands, our only recourse is to literally put paper bags in our warehouse. Right, a little bit tedious, but we've managed to move all of the paper bags into the warehouse. I've also just noticed that I didn't really call that anything. We'll just change the name of it. We'll just call it uh, Phony Warehouse 1. Phony Warehouse 1, lovely. Right, I think that's going to do us for this episode, guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the adventures of Tony. Mr. Ambulance, could you please move? Thank you very much. Uh, in the next one, we will kit out our new jewelry store. We hopefully won't go bankrupt, and uh, maybe we'll even make a little bit of profit. And uh, we're doing okay. I mean, apart from the huge debts that we have, we're doing okay. But you know, that's what that's what being a CEO is all about, isn't it? Living on the edge. Got to speculate to accumulate and all that. But from Tony, I think that is it for today. Take care, guys. Happy simming.